Yo, what's going on guys? It's Gamer here back again with another Dragon Ball Super episode review. Today we're reviewing Dragon Ball Super episode 99 titled Show It Off Krillin's Hidden Strength, right? And that's basically what this whole episode is. Well, rather, the second half of the episode is mainly about Krillin and 18. And the beginning part of the episode actually is basically everyone just completely shocked at what had just happened in the previous episode. For those of you who don't remember for whatever reason, Universe 9 had gotten erased from the two Zenos. Universe 9's fighters got completely all knocked out of the ring, and then it was their fourth that Universe 9 was then to get erased. And everyone in the arena right now, all the fighters, they're just completely shocked that this happened. And I'm really glad that they did this because, you know, earlier before when they were fighting in the beginning, of course, they completely just kind of were br brushed off the fact that they were getting erased and we're just having you know a fun time fighting each other but then universe 9 got eliminated and they were erased from existence and it kind of just put them in a state of mind of we need a different mindset and we need different plans or else we're just going to be basically fucked at this point right so I'm, I'm glad that they did this it was very smart of toei to add this in into the episode because you know it, it just makes it just shows that they do care about existing, of course, and that they need to be smart with what they're doing. And something else that I'm actually really glad that they, do, that they did in the beginning of the episode as well is one of the Supreme Kais from one of the different universes was talking about how, uh, you know, how they're all, like, changing plans or whatever, yada, yada, yada. And they're saying how now because of the existence of now we know that if a universe gets erased... You know, now this now the weaker universes uh, that were on like the scale of which one was going to get eliminated first. For example, Universe Nine, not in the tournament, but just as a thing, right? Like no one's really like blaming Goku. It seems like anymore, right? Like now everyone basically has a chance to survive thanks to Goku, and now uh, they're pretty much not blaming him for for anything. So, so I'm glad they did, they did this as well because. People in like certain threads and on YouTube were talking about how like, oh, Goku's the bad guy. He's a dick because he has Zeno to uh, activate, or not activate, but he has Zeno to start up a tournament so that way uh, he can fight, but even though universes are going to get destroyed, bleh, but it's like they were going to get erased anyways, so it didn't even really matter if it was, if this tournament had happened or not. Because, like I said, they were going to get erased as is anyways, so who really cares? Now, weaker tournaments, or not tournaments, uh, weaker universes, now have a chance to, well, survive. And we actually do get uh, a couple more hints to the great, the great priest, or the grand priest, and the angels being evil. I haven't really talked about this recently, just because, I don't know, I not, not because I don't want to, or I think the theory is stupid. I just didn't really want to talk about it. I wanted to leave it to other people just to talk about it on their own. But basically the theory is is that the, the Grand Priest and the Angels are going to turn against the, the existing uh, universe at the very end and the two Zenos and basically overthrow them because the Grand Priest had like children in different universes that used to exist, but Zeno had destroyed those universes. So it's almost as if the Grand Priest and the other Angels of all the universes that are in this tournament it almost seems like they're getting revenge and if you didn't know the angels are the grand priest's children and we know this for a fact because in the episode we actually called the grand priest his father so we get a couple more hints to some, uh, maybe a couple of the angels being evil because the angel of universe 9 just kind of just seemed like i guess the only, he says like i'm the one only one who exists but i guess it had to happen or or something i don't remember what he said and then Vados acts very condescending towards Champa, saying goodbye, Champa sama or whatever, right? Not really seeming as if she cares. It's very interesting because, you know, it's hinting the fact that they may or may not be evil, and we're just sitting here wondering what the hell is honestly going to happen, you know? And back to the fighting, of course. 
you know, we're there, it, stuff is happening, et cetera, et cetera. I actually want to point out this one scene with Frieza in the episode because I thought it was kind of funny. But Frieza notices that the two Zenos are there and they erase the entire existence. And I guess Frieza got a little bit jealous for whatever reason. I thought it was really funny. He's like, oh, I'll, one day I'll, pr I'll overthrow you or whatever. I'll reign over you or some shit. I thought it was kind of funny that it happened because it's like that would have totally, that's totally Frieza, you know. I thought it was very funny. But we get back into the action, of course. Uh, Vegeta sees Botamo and Hit actually, and Vegeta goes ahead and is like, "I need to pay these, I need to pay these guys back because if if you remember, Vegeta and Hit fought once back in the previous tournament in Super, but he lost. So he's going after Hit immediately in a Super Saiyan form, just to get some payback, of course. But Hit goes away, and Botamo actually takes the Hit because uh, Botamo can basically complete, uh, completely nullifies." any towards any some form of damage towards him so Vegeta is punching him it's not doing anything Vegeta tries to fucking throw him over his shoulder or some shit but Tama's like that's not gonna work it's not gonna work whatever right and so Vegeta actually takes his arm and takes his other arm and ties them together right and then he picks up Otamo and is about to throw him out of the uh, out of the area the ring or arena and I thought I thought one quote that Vegeta said in the episode was kind of funny. Uh, when Botamo got lifted by Vegeta, and he was like, "Time out, time out!" And then Vegeta's like, "The hell with your time out and your mom too." And I don't understand why that was a part of the script and why they he said it, but he did, and it made me literally laugh out loud. I thought that was the funniest quote ever in Super thus far. And then uh, up comes Mageta, and if you don't know, Vegeta fought uh, Mageta in the previous tournament. And he actually won, and that fight was actually fairly interesting when it happened. But now this is basically revenge for Mageta uh, to, bas to basically just be like, I'm gonna fucking do this, whatever, I don't fucking know, right? But as some of you obviously know, um, in the previous tournament, uh, Vegeta had insulted uh, but, uh, not Botamo, Mageta, and had caused him to get out of the ring and causing uh, Mageta to lose. And so Vegeta is there insulting Mageta, but it doesn't work because Champa was like, oh, he conquered his fear. But the way he conquered his fear is literally Botamo went up onto his shoulders and covered his ears. And I thought that was really funny too, because it's just like he didn't really conquer his fear. He, his ears are just being covered, and that's it. I'm running out of breath, I apologize. I might need to take a second or two so I can like catch my breath, I apologize for real. But but anyways, yeah, Vegeta's there insulting him, it doesn't work. Vegeta throws punches at Botamo, but it's not working of course. And then we go to another scene where this green bird guy, I don't really know his name, I apologize for not knowing. He shoots a key blast towards Krillin, and then I thought this was a really cool. Gohan uh, vanishes right in front of Krillin, puts his hand out, and then pushes back the key blast like it was no problem. Fucking badass! I loved it. I thought it was awesome. And so uh, the the green bird guy, don't know his name, like I said, is like shooting off key blast again towards Krillin. Krillin is dodging the attacks, and then he throws uh, some Kianzons or, or destructive disc if you if you watch the dub. Uh, that's the dub name for the Kianzon. He's throwing, he's throwing multiple of them. He kind of clips them, it looks like. And then Roshi, the most underrated guy in Universe 7, Master Roshi, he go, shoots off a Kamehameha and knocks off this guy off of the area or the arena. And I thought this was really cool because Master Roshi buffs up, shoots off a Kamehameha and knocks him off. Literally the most underrated fighter for this tournament knocked somebody off of the of the arena and I thought that was awesome and then the whole rest of the episode is basically just uh, a whole 18 uh, 18 and Krillin episode so we get back to uh, the um, the bleachers or whatever and eight and uh, 18 um, we is mentioning the fact that 18 is uh, holding her own against someone from universe 4 and then we go to a scene, she's fighting some, like, green wolf guy or whatever from Universe 4. He, uh, she punches him, and then it almost seems like that she 
accidentally kill him. And as you know, if you accidentally kill someone, that's an immediately dis disqualification. But in real, uh, but in reality, he just was. He played dead. That's what he did. He he played dead. Caught her off guard. Shoot off. Shoot off. Shot off a, co a whole bunch of key blast and knocked her off. But he didn't. He didn't actually knock her knock her off because Krillin goes over to the edge of the arena and then saves well 18 his wife and I thought I thought this was really cool because he jumps out towards the arena to get 18 and then as they're out he shoots off a key blast to push him back into the arena and then they're back on the arena and nothing seemed like it happened I thought this was really cool I was really impressed with Krillin I thought that was fucking awesome this whole episode really was just the whole Krillin episode and I was really proud of Krillin really I, I was like he did very well uh, eventually he did uh, spoilers ended up getting knocked out of the arena and I'm uh, very upset that he kind of got knocked off so early but I feel like it would have actually ended up happening anyways but I still am kind of disappointed that he was the first fighter from Universe 7 to get knocked out but whatever I guess like I said, I'm kind of disappointed, but I feel like because it's Krillin, it it was going to happen. So, whatever. Let's get back into the fight. Uh, 18 and Krillin uh, thought of a plan, actually, and they shoot off a Key Blast uh, towards the guy, but then Krillin deflects it back, and then it just goes off into a consistent pattern of 18 and Krillin shooting the Key Blast back towards each other until it ends up getting faster and bigger, and then it hits the, this green wolf guy his name's Shosa I, I believe if I if I saw it correctly I, I don't really know <laughs> his name's Shosa they knock him off another another fighter from universe 4 gets eliminated uh, someone is charging a kick towards Krillin Krillin is about to get kicked in the fucking face and then uh, 18 actually saves him right so, uh, from not getting knocked out of the arena of course and then uh, this uh, it's like a fox guy I don't really know his name either I apologize for not knowing most of these fighters names but they're really not interesting and they got knocked off the arena as is anyways so not, I don't think it really matters but this fox guy he shows up and he starts to fight Krillin in 18 and immediately uh, Krillin already thought of a plan he pulled out uh, glasses they stole from Master Roshi and told 18 to put them on and then Krillin goes ahead and he shoots off uh, a Taioken a times 100 or uh, the Solar Flare times 100 uh, towards the Fox guy. And the thing that happens is it doesn't work. He's completely he doesn't get he completely nullified the Solar Flare times 100. It just didn't work. And so he kicks Krillin. He kicks 18, and they're just wondering what happened and how it did not work. And basically, he's blind. This fox dude or whatever, he's blind. He can't see. But the advantage that he does have is, from him being blind, his sense of smell is much greater. So he uses that to his advantage. And then immediately, Krillin thought of a uh, thought of, th immediately Krillin thought up of a plan to knock him off of the ring by doing, well, not the not the prettiest of things but basically he's uh, he's going towards them he's fighting back he actually takes off his shoe and throws it towards the guy and it lands on his nose and it smells so badly that uh, well they actually animated like green or brown uh, smoke gas or whatever it smells that bad right and so basically from that it nullifies his sense of smell and then Krillin shoots off a Kamehameha and knocks him off of the arena. It all well was good. He was kind of boasting a little bit. Kind of a little bit. But then out of nowhere, Krillin gets knocked off of the arena. And there you go. That's Universe 7's first fighter. And the, fir the person who actually knocked off Krillin was Frost. It was Frost. He knocked off Krillin when he had his guard down. And then Frost throws down a Key Blast towards the ground and then completely disappears from the area and that's the end of the episode uh, Beerus of course is very mad at him for being eliminated and Supreme Kai even though he's like I'm not mad at all he kind of looks really pissed off at him and I thought that was funny 
but then I was like, oh, come on, he did a good job. Don't, don't be mad at Krillin for any reason. And so that's pretty much the end of the episode. Krillin knows what he did. He knows what happened. He feels bad, but then he's, of course, going to cheer on his friends and stuff like that. And that's pretty much the end of the episode. There's only, like, what, 43 minutes left until the end of the tournament and stuff like that. Yeah, 43 minutes until the end of the tournament. And we'll just have to wait and see until episode 100. Next week's episode is going to be episode 100. I am very excited. I am very, very excited because for episode 100, I would only assume that they would try to give this episode a really good, really good animation. But... For all I know, they just decide not to for whatever reason. But hopefully, episode 100 is, you know, just as good as like any of the episodes that have that have come out recently. Because the Tournament of Power like episodes that have been coming out for the past couple of weeks have just been utter amazingness. Like it's so good. And if you're not watching Super, uh, and you've kind of like stopped watching the series, come back for this arc because. It's so good, I just would always 100% recommend watching Super and stuff like that. But anyways, I'm, I guess I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video here. The episode was was pretty solid. What, what, uh, it was, actually, no, it wasn't even pretty solid. It was very good, as if all, uh, as are all of these episodes that have come out the past like couple weeks and stuff like that. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video here. If you guys did enjoy, be sure to drop a like. And if you're brand new to the channel, please consider hitting, hitting that subscribe button. Future content just like this. I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Peace out.